Greetings, mere mortals. It is time for all of us to be burdened with glorious purpose. The glorious purpose of Loki season two, because it is Loki season again, guys, and I could not be more excited. I had the lovely honor of getting to screen the first couple episodes of Loki season two early. Thank you so much to Marvel and Disney for that opportunity. No worries though, this is going to be a completely spoiler-free review. This episode cannot be described by any other word than electric. It is gripping, it is fast paced, it shoots you right back into the TVA to this world that we've gotten acclimated to over the course of the last season. And this is really done so effectively by the cinematography in this episode. I know that there's been some change up behind the scenes of kind of who's in charge, who's running the show here. However, I think it's all for the better. I'm not trying to retcon any hate towards Loki season one because I do not have any of that in my heart, but this premiere episode of season two truly knocked me off my feet. I just felt like the camera angles, there feels like there's an added grain to the camera and the film that might be used this season. The color grading is even more spectacular and retro feeling than we had before. You know how when we've been watching stuff recently and things are allowed to have a slow pace, things can have a good buildup. I myself am a fan of a good slow burn romance. However, there's certain shows that get off to such a slow start that you feel like I don't even know that this is worth it? Is this actually going to get somewhere important in the next six episodes? At the end of the last season, a lot of things were shaken up at the TVA. And this episode does a really great job delivering on the promises of that shakeup and that cliffhanger, while also leaving a bit of mystery to be unfolded over the course of this season. I also have to comment on how wonderful of a duo Owen Wilson and Tom Hiddleston are. Both of them are beloved and kind of they have a good natured humor. And so you could think, oh, like them as just a comedy duo works, but it's not just that. It's their comedic timing. It's their chemistry on screen together it's their understanding of each of their characters they have knocked it out of the park and proven that whoever put the two of them together really needs to be being paid the big bucks and then I couldn't not mention Kiki Kwan the most recent Oscar winner for best supporting actor he is such a welcome addition to this new season he fits in perfectly and once again what has been so kind of inherent I think to the Loki season one and now season two is how integral the world building is to the actual story. Like it's one thing to for us to be plopped down in a nondescript European country where there's some spy things going on and we're looking at a geopolitical scale. I'm looking at you, Secret Invasion. When you've been taught the rules of a world and then you can expand on that world and use it to create new characters that are not just plopped down into an environment that they're not natural to. And they're plopping down characters that are, this is their habitat. And Kiki Kwan's character of OB is such a perfect representation of that and how well this series has been able to truly accomplish making it feel like it's within the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but also making it feel like a new and fresh thing, That which is, I think, why so many people love season one of the show and are going to love season two. I keep referencing season one, and I don't know what other way to put this other than this season feels like it is more, even more purposeful as a television series because there is a different format to how you write and tell a story and develop characters when you're in a television format versus a film format and a lot of marvel and star wars projects on disney plus have gotten a lot of slack for feeling like movies that have been chopped up into hour episodes each and being like a, a longer version of a movie there does need to feel like when you have a season premiere there's newness there that we're not just dragging out a limited series into a second season and this episode delivers on that in terms of slight costume change, in terms of where the drama is different, in terms of the revelations of the character and who the characters at play are. There's a couple other characters that I wasn't really privy to. I haven't watched all the promotions, but I haven't ignored them either. There's a couple characters that I wasn't really privy to that add to how this bureaucratic organization has been working and operating, especially with what we've learned after season one. And all of that is so great. Um, I also feel like this episode <laughs> added an element and, and maybe this is a change between the two seasons. It's something that I feel like was evoked in the first season but has really kind of been committed to here in this first premiere episode of season two is the what I like to call the Jeremy Baramy effect or kind of the good placification of a show that deals with time travel or any sort of like 
kind of otherworldly element and it's the fact that Marvel at its core has always been kind of a comedic enterprise of films. What I think is so natural with the TVA is kind of adding things that evoke that good natured comedic aspect of the MCU while also implying stakes. And there is a scene which I won't spoil, but there is something called a spaghettifier or a spaghettification <laughs> factor. And it just reminded me of the way that Jeremy Baramy is the way that time works is explained in The Good Place. So if you get that reference, great. If not, you know, just know that there's some good natured fun to be had in this new season that also has a lot at stake. This is something that I, I've never really noticed until this episode is how boring time travel can really be as a concept. Like we get so caught up in either the mechanics of time travel or what we're trying to accomplish with time travel that we're not actually really interested in the time travel itself. It's kind of more like, how is this possible? Or what is the end goal rather than kind of like, oh, here's the actual like second by second effects of this time travel, which this episode kind of gets to deal with, which is a really fun thing. We're also, as the TVA is sort of unraveling, if you will, in this episode after the fallout of season one, getting to see the implications of time working differently in the TVA. It's really fun to get to just see every step of the process of how time travel can be played with. And also, again, using that good natured humor that the MCU has always had and really kind of imbuing every single moment of the show with that again, without feeling like you have to laugh out loud every time. There's no obligatory humor in this episode, which I think has been a lot of people's gripes with other MCU projects that have come out recently. The episode, simply put, is just a great time and it has me absolutely ecstatic for what this series is going to be able to do not only for the character I love so dearly of Loki, but additionally for people who have potentially been a little wishy-washy on how they feel about Marvel. I think this series is a really strong foot forward. This first episode is the first indication of that. And I really hope that the people who are working in this are going to continue this good natured television feel of this show rather than trying to make it into something it's not. I will say, for those of you who have stuck this long, there is a post credit scene. Thank you guys so much for watching my review of Loki season two, episode one. I will be doing these reviews weekly. If you want to catch all my Loki content, potentially episode breakdowns or spoiler reviews, you're going to want to subscribe. So don't forget to do that before you click on the next video. I really appreciate you guys watching. I hope you have an amazing day or night whenever you're watching this and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.